Caring for Collections, a conservation series by State Library of Queensland in collaboration with Queensland Museum. How to care for your family collection. Family collections can provide us with a strong personal connection to our history. The first step to caring for your collection is to sort it into logical groups. Doing so will help you identify what you have and reduces the risk of misplacing items. Don't throw anything out unless you're 100% sure. Creating an I don't know box is a safer alternative. Next, create an inventory list of your collection. To add significance and value, identify people in photographs and attach stories to each item. By prioritising your collection, you can identify important and valuable items. This will help you decide what needs conservation treatment, digitisation or special housing. Decide what is the best or most affordable housing option for your collection. Any kind of housing is better than none. Finally, share your collection. Digital collections can easily be shared online with family and friends. And selectively displaying your collection will allow you to share your stories on significant days. By properly caring for your family history, you can ensure it will be around for future generations to enjoy. And you'll be playing your part in caring for our history. Housing your collection in the right way will ensure it is enjoyed for generations to come. Before choosing what to store your items in, you will first need to consider which protective materials will work best for your collection. There are two main types of safe protective materials, plastic and paper. Paper enclosures are a good choice in humid areas as they allow for greater airflow. Plastic enclosures are a good choice for frequently accessed collections, as you can view your objects without removing them. If you decide to use plastic, ensure that you use stable plastics, free from coatings, plasticizers, and other harmful additives. Polyester products like Mylar or Melanex work best. Polypropylene sleeves are another good choice, but you should never laminate. If you are using paper enclosures, look for materials that are 100% cellulose and free from acid and lignin. As a general rule, choose buffered papers for paper items and non-buffered for photographs and objects. When packing your collections, use stable archival fabrics and tissue paper to support your items. Archival corrugated board boxes are a great option for storage. Plastic tubs or polypropylene boxes provide a sturdy option for storage, but may be problematic in humid environments. Good ventilation will be required. If you're using a wooden storage box, one option is to line it first to reduce the risk of harmful chemicals migrating from the wood to your collection. By investing in safe materials to house and store your items, you will ensure the longevity of your collection and play your part in caring for our history. How to store your collection safely. What you store your items in and where you store them can affect the safety and lifespan of your collection. The furniture that you choose for storage needs to be free from harmful toxins and emissions. Aluminium or steel, coated with baked enamel paint or powder coated steel storage furniture provides the best protection. Be cautious of acidic timber cabinetry. If it can't be avoided, you can line the cabinetry with an archival barrier. Raw timber is best sealed with a water-based acrylic paint or a waterborne polyurethane varnish. Add an extra level of protection by storing your collections in an archival box. When choosing a storage location, choose a well-insulated space with consistent temperature away from moisture, heat and direct light. 
That means away from external walls and no kitchens, bathrooms or locations near plumbing. Maintain a regular housekeeping checklist. Checking for pests and mould activity. Evidence of water or heat damage. Security or seal breaches on windows and doors. Dirty air conditioning filters. Unusual chemical or organic smells. Rust on metal storage units. And sticky or tacky timber furniture. Also, a regular cleaning routine will keep the storage environment dust free and reduce pest activity and the chance of mould growth. By using safe storage materials, maintaining a stable storage environment and having a regular cleaning routine, you can play your part in caring for our history. How to safely handle your collection. Careless handling is one of the most common causes of damage to collections. If you are required to handle your collection, use fitted, powder-free gloves. Clean cotton or nitrile gloves work best. Before handling, take a moment to examine each item. What do you see? Is there any damage? Any weak points? If so, try to avoid these areas. Each item will have unique handling needs. Always provide adequate support to items. Use two hands, one from below to support the item and the other hand to steady. And remember to hold items from their strongest point. Don't rely on handles or attachments as these might not be as sturdy as they once were. When handling brittle and fragile items, always support from underneath. Placing your item on a board will minimize damage from handling. You can even use a pillow to cradle fragile objects when viewing or moving them around. By handling your collection as little as possible and using safe handling techniques, you can play your part in caring for our history. How to safely display your collection. Sharing your collection with others is rewarding. But before you display any items, there are a few things to consider to help keep your collection in good condition. First, prepare your space. A well-insulated room, away from sources of moisture, heat and direct light, will provide a stable environment for your exhibit. Remember sunlight, fluctuating temperatures, heat and high humidity can cause irreversible damage to your collection. Once you have prepared a safe space, it is time to prepare your collection for display. Using safe handling techniques, look over your collection, noting any weak points or potential display challenges. This will help you decide on the best method to display each item. Some display options include cushions and cradles to support book spines, card beneath documents for an extra layer of protection, mannequins and padded hangers for textiles, and stable mounts for your objects. You can also use archival mount board, reversible hinges, and museum glass or acrylic sheeting for framing to reduce damage from light and pollutants. But remember, Framing materials should never come into direct contact with your objects. Display furniture can be from around your home, but to reduce the risk of damage to your collection, you first need to identify what it is made of. Units made from wood or containing plastics, adhesives, rubber or wool linings can be harmful to your collection and will need to be retrofitted. This can be done by completely removing the risk or lining the unit using archival materials to create a barrier. Alternatively, you can make a display plinth or box using inert materials. A no food or drink policy is worth considering and having a regular cleaning routine will help you protect your collection from dust, mould and pests. By maintaining a good display environment, Using safe handling and display methods and having a regular cleaning routine, 
you can play your part in caring for our history. How to care for textiles. Textiles will naturally degrade over time. However, there are things you can do to slow the process down. If you are required to handle your textiles, wear gloves and ensure the whole item is supported. A sheet of clean, acid-free cardboard under your fragile textile will provide additional support and reduce stress and tearing. Not all textiles can be stored in the same way, so it's important to choose the appropriate storage method for the textile. When selecting a location for storage or display, choose a dimly lit space with a consistent temperature and humidity. Dust and insects are particularly damaging to textiles. A regular cleaning schedule keeps harmful dust, mould and insects at bay. Whilst displaying your textiles is rewarding, it does pose risks. These can be reduced by using appropriate display methods and rotating your textiles on and off display. With the right storage, correct handling and good housekeeping, you can prolong the life of your textiles and play your part in caring for our history. How to care for metals. Metal may seem tough, but without proper care, tarnish, discoloration and corrosion can damage your collection beyond repair. Correct handling will help avoid oil and acid from your hands causing corrosion and pitting. Keeping metal in your collection dirt and dust free will reduce moisture buildup and the risk of surface damage. Avoid harsh cleaning products or over polishing. A soft brush and vacuum works best. All metal items need to be kept in a stable environment with the appropriate humidity levels for the metal. The colour of the metal and any existing corrosion will help you identify the type of metal you are working with and the steps you need to take to care for it. By using correct handling techniques, appropriate cleaning methods and keeping an eye on metal in your collection, you can play your part in caring for our history. To recover a flood damaged collection Personal safety is the first priority when dealing with disaster. People are more important than material objects. Once the disaster site has been declared safe to enter, use protective equipment like gloves, face masks, closed-in shoes and safety glasses to protect yourself. Next, create a salvage space. This is where you will relocate damaged items. Set up a table and line it with a clean absorbent material. You will need to change this regularly. Gather additional supplies like plastic sheeting, crates, boxes and containers. Plastic clothes pegs, clothesline or string is useful to hang items to dry. If power is available, fans, dehumidifiers and freezers will help the salvage process. Now. Catch your breath and make a plan. Work methodically, quickly and with correct handling techniques. If an item is safe and the area is stable, leave the item where it is. Attend to water damaged items as a priority. Carefully place these items into your plastic boxes or crates and transport them to your salvage area. Once damaged items are relocated, you will need to prioritise action for individual items. Identifying the most precious objects will be a personal decision. If faced with disaster, don't lose heart. Many items will be salvageable by yourself. But if you are unsure, don't throw damaged items out. Contact a conservator for assistance. How to salvage your water damaged collection. After you have recovered your collection and set up a salvage area, you can now assess the best recovery option for each of your items. If you are faced with wet photographs, books and paper items, you can wash dirt and contaminants away by gently rinsing each item with cold water. 
If possible, separate photographs before you wash them and avoid touching the image. Remember that wet items will be very fragile. You can use a plastic support to reduce handling damage. When handling books, remember to properly support the spine. To air dry your items, place them on top of sheets of absorbent material and continue to replace the material until your items are completely dry. Photographs should be placed image side up and avoid touching the surface. If you have limited space, you may also consider hanging photographs to dry. If your wet books can safely stand without placing stress on the spine, fan the pages out. If the books cannot stand, place a sheet of absorbent material inside the front and back covers and after every 10 pages. Place flat to dry. To minimise distortion, once almost dry, place fewer interleaves into the book and place a weight on top. Fans and dehumidifiers can also be used to maximise air circulation and speed up drying. Avoid using heaters or hair dryers. If the items are damaged or washing and drying is not immediately possible, freezing will buy you time for later recovery. Whilst wet, wrap items either individually or interleave with baking paper and seal tightly in plastic bags ready for the freezer. Do not freeze glass, metal, wood or composite items. With a little patience, you will be able to salvage many items by yourself. But if you are unsure, don't throw damaged items out. Contact a conservator for assistance. How to digitise your collection. Digitising photos, paper items and books from your collection helps preserve the physical item and enables you to safely share your collection with others. A digital camera works best for bound books, albums and objects, whilst a flatbed scanner is most suitable for two-dimensional items like documents and photos. Before you start, set up a clean and clear workspace and remember to always use safe handling techniques. When photographing or scanning items, choose a file format and image resolution that meets your needs and resist the urge to press down on scanners when scanning bulky items like books, as this can crack the spine. You can use image editing software for any necessary adjustments, but remember it's best to maintain the look of the original. A consistent file naming structure will make accessing your files easier and adding additional information to your files, like locations, names, and stories will increase the significance and value of your collection. Finally, to preserve your digital files, make multiple copies and store them at different locations. With a little care and the help of technology, you can play your part in caring for our history.